Welcome to Dirt Live Off-Road Racing Show. And here's your host, George Antill. Hey, welcome to Dirt Live. Tonight, we got a host of guests tonight. We got Danny Eberts. We got Art Saavedra. Hey, welcome back to Dirt Live. I'm here with Danny Eberts and Art Saavedra, a head of the tech of SCORE and HDR. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You know, nice Danny, uh, let's tell a little history about you. You're a race driver. You're also a fabricator. You've been a crew chief. You were like Lucas, crew chief of the year for uh, a couple years. Yeah, I won uh, Mechanic of the Year 2010 for the Lucas Short Course Series. Uh, prep class one cars for a long time and helped my brothers with their race cars. Uh, my dad's race uh, desert for a long time. Also done a lot of uh, USAC midget sprint car racing, won the uh, USAC midget championship in 2001, um, and prepped cars and, and raced the Baja 1000 and with two class one cars that I prepped and, and prepared for that race. So a lot of history behind you in racing your dad, Tom, and the whole family. Yeah, second generation, um, all three of my brothers, four brothers in total have all raced uh, you know, with, with SCORE, HDRA, for a long time now. Now you came from racing back east. You did some sprint car racing? Yeah, I um, won the championship here in the western states, the USAC championship, and I moved to Indianapolis and raced for a full season there. Um, got to race all the tracks there and raced sprint cars and silver crown cars and midgets and, um, and then kind of came back and started racing. I got to race a Pro 2 in the Lucas series. I raced a Pro Light in the uh, Core series in 2007 and um, been trying to either drive or work on race cars to make a living and, and done so for a while now and happy that I'm able to still do that. Well, let's, let's kind of go back a little bit in uh, 2012. You, uh, you guys raced a two-car team for the 2012 Baja 1000 that went all the way down to La Paz and uh, uh, Brad Etter owns the cars. Yeah, Brad Etter owns two uh, race cars. Um, we race, raced them. Um, Brad had some unfortunate luck at the very beginning, and the car got taken out of the race. So the second car that was uh, Corey Cruzman was driving and Ricky Gaunt, which are both sprint car drivers, racing their uh, Corey Cruzman's first off-road race and Ricky Gaunt's first Mexico race. And so they decided to do the Baja 1000, and I got to help them do that with the pre-running and the setup of the race car and all the logistics of the team. And, um, had a very good race going until we got to Loretto when I was driving the car and we had a refueling fire that, that caught the whole car on fire and a chase truck. Well, let, let's kind of, everybody knows that, you know, we've seen all the video and everything from it uh, since November of last year. So let's just kind of run through as you pulled into Loretto uh, what took place as you came in. Yeah, we got into Loretto, I think it was about 9.30 in the morning. Um, been racing just over 20 hours and... Uh, I was driving the car and as I pulled into the pit, made sure I got into the pit calmly, safely, and my co-rider exited the car as soon as we pulled in. I shut the car off, turned all the fans off, and we we're going to get out. We we're going to take you know, a four or five minute pit stop, make sure everything was good for the last 250 miles of the race. And just I shut the, the fans off, the fuelers were already trying to fuel the car. And we had either the, the hose break or clamp break and it sprayed the car and ignited the whole car. And I was completely strapped in. Um, and my window net wouldn't go down, so I had lost a few seconds getting my window net down and then get my belt off, my, my pumper, my water system, my radio, and then I went out the right side of the car, um, which actually is better because it was away from the side that was fueling. And um, as soon as I knew the car was on fire, I held my breath, which, you know, definitely saved my life. And so I exited the right side of the car, and, um, you know, the car was completely engulfed. You can't even see the car. I jumped, when I landed out of the car, I thought it was on fire because of the fire was so far from the car. I was able to roll and get out of the fire and then was able to get away from the car. Now I know, you know, people have watched the video. We'll show a little bit of it coming up here in a couple of minutes again. They're actually watching it behind us. Um, as you can see here, right there, Danny. Um, the guy running around, the, uh, this was later on, I guess, when they came and, you know, moved stuff around with the tractor, but maybe we can play it back real quick. And uh, the guy that we saw in the video, um, you can see right here. We'll watch this as it goes. You can kind of talk us through. It You're is. already... Yeah, I'm still belted in right here and uh, trying to get my belt undone. Um, my <coughs> cousin Robert was, was riding with me 
and he got out and he thought I was still in the car because he was on the left side, on the driver's side, waiting, trying to help me get out by spraying a fire extinguisher. But my neck could not be able to go down on that side and went out the right side. And so he was, was trying to you know, put the fire out, but there was, we had you know, multiple fire extinguishers there on, at the pit, but the fire was so big and so quickly that the fire extinguishers wouldn't do anything to the fire. Now, is there, you know, let, let's kind of go over some safety. You know, we've seen what happened. We're, you're here tonight and uh, definitely went through some bad injuries with this. And uh, what could have prevented maybe a, a lot of it? Um, you know, we've used fuel towers for a long time and, and tried to be really safe with them. And, and uh, we just, we don't know if we had a, a hose failure or a clamp failure. And that's still something we'll never know because of how burnt everything was. Um, and, you know, I've, since I was, I was at home from the hospital three days and I've already made ends to be able to pressure test all of our hoses. And uh, so that's something I've suggested to other teams is to pressure test your hoses, pressure test your towers. Um, you know, check all the clamps, try to use double clamps on, on everything. Um, you know, have obviously fire extinguishers there on site, you know, in case something happens. If, you know, if we had a few more uh, people, teammates to be able to help that we could have had someone maybe with a fire extinguisher as soon as it splashed to be able to spray it with a fire extinguisher, might have kept it from igniting. Um, you know, something we don't know and something, you know, wish we would have had there. And, um, you know, I was wearing all the proper safety gear. I had, uh, Three layer Alpine Star suit on, an impact helmet um, with the proper skirt, I had Nomex underwear, um, good two layer Carbon X race gloves, and I still received second and third degree burns on my hands, my face, because my shield was open, uh, my elbow, and my right heel, even through the Nomex and the three layer driving suit. Um, my crew, I, you know, usually we have them with suits and helmets there because a thousand with as many people as it takes to, to do a race like the Ball 1000 Peninsula run didn't have suits and helmets. And um, so unfortunately, one of my crew members got burnt a lot worse than me. And uh, he's doing well and making a recovery now, but something that, you know, I wish all teams would learn from and, and uh, you know, have all their, their crew guys in fire suits and helmets, whether they're doing fueling or if they're just near the car, because, you know, that, it was a guy that was pulling a tire off that got burnt the worst. So basically, you know, we're trying to let people know out there that, uh, it is very important, you know, even the driver has all this protection, but the crews in a case like this probably could have prevented uh, some major, uh, the injuries that your one crew guy got. Yep, exactly, and that's the thing. I think if everyone, you know, first tries to prevent the fires from happening uh, is the obvious thing, and uh, then the second thing is have the right safety gear on it. As bad as this fire was, it shows if, you know, you wear the right safety gear and you're able to get out of the car, you can get out with fire and still live to race another day. You know, and same with the crew guys, too, if they're wearing the right safety gear, you know, something like this happens, they, you know, will, will not have, suffer the amount of burns that you can without it. You know, I mean, it's amazing the technology and the, the fire equipment that they have now. And so, you know, they just all need to wear it and, you know, wear the proper stuff. Now, let's talk about Stan 21 jumps in and uh, you're working with them and uh, doing a lot. Of, they gave you some great Christmas presents. Yeah, Stan 21 is... Um, really involved in safety stuff and they're doing a safety seminar um, coming up soon and, and I'm going to speak at that and just want to try to help people learn from this and, and uh, you know stuff that Art's done for a long time with his injuries is, is that fire is a very dangerous thing and, and uh, you don't know when it's going to happen so San 21 is, is really behind the safety part of it and it's cool that they're involved in the off-road racing community to, to spread that you know that word of safety and um, you know, I mean, Art's been, been promoting that for a long time, but there's still a lot of guys, even with these high dollar race cars that wear single air suits and, you know, Nomex and, you know, the proper gloves and shoes. And, um, you know, it's just, I hope people learn that, you know, as bad as my burns were, that if I didn't have the gear on that I had, I'd probably still be in the hospital now. And so. Yeah, because I know, how long were you in the hospital for? I was in the hospital close to three weeks. Uh, I had two surgeries. Um, so was, I ended up actually going home quicker than doctors expected. I did get some skin grafting, but not, not from my actual own skin. Um, you know, so it was, was a quicker, longer than I thought I was going to be there with it, but uh, you know, quicker than doctors expected. All right, Art, as we, we talked, you know, Art, you've been around uh, racing your whole life, and uh, you're now the tech director for uh, HDRA and SCORE, and I, I'm sure when you saw this happen, you know, your accident was 35 years ago. Yeah. I actually was 35 years ago, and it was a completely different thing. 
It was a motorcycle van collision. I uh, wish the story was a lot better. It would be a lot more interesting. But from all of that and being burnt as bad as I am, I go to the races emphasizing the fact that the fire suits, your helmets, your no max netting, your no max underwear, your shoes, your gloves are very important. And that's why, you know, we in, at Arts checks everything. I mean, we look at the helmets, we look at the gloves, we look at the fire suits, we look for holes. Anything that gets under that fire suit will keep burning as your skin burns. Now, you know, we, Danny, let's point out the safety guys were so good to you. Let's just give them a little yeah, kudos. Yeah, with uh, SCORE International uh, and the SCORE Rescue guys were, were on scene very quickly after it happened. I mean, they're covering a race that's almost 1,200 miles long and uh, were there. And when we went to Loretta Hospital, they were there with us the whole time. They got plane flights down to us, got us to safety. Um, so I learned a lot more about burns than I ever wanted to know and, and how life-threatening they can be with the swelling and, you know, with... with Flames, you know, in your lungs, and uh, yeah, the score rescue was great, and was was a lot of help there. And so, all right. Well, we want to let the fans know if you want to see Danny um, out at Long Beach Grand Prix, you'll be there with Stan Twenty One. Be talking yeah. about this accident. You can see right here, folks, the helmet that uh, Danny was wearing. We have a driving suit here, which uh, you can see some, a lot of the burn marks. And uh, like I said, uh, very important to wear that Nomex. I know a lot of guys don't. Maybe starting tonight. Uh, they'll start doing that. Yeah, I hope people, you know, wear the right safety gear. Um, you know, sports companies that support off-road, too. And, uh, you know, and then something, too, that, you know, not a whole lot of people talk about with fire safety is holding your breath as, you know, when you know you're on fire to exit the, the car, truck, on the opposite side of where the fueling is to try to get away from the yeah. fuel. All right, well, Danny, thank you very much for joining us. All right, thanks for Art, having me. once again, great job. Always a Tech pleasure. Director. Dirt Live, promoting racers one interview at a time.